we will begin, we will sing a few choruses, and we will begin with number 59, Come and Go With Me. Jesus lifted me. 
Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I would like to welcome every one of you here tonight, especially the women. Our purpose tonight is to honor all women, those present and those via the social media. And tonight I'm very elated to be a woman. And not only a woman, but a woman of God. Amen. 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 And if you are happy to be a woman, you can lift your voice with me and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 When God created Adam and Eve, guess what was missing? Yes. A woman. A woman. One of us was missing. So you see how important we are? Yes. The Lord knew that Adam needed a companion. Yes. yes. The Lord Amen. took Adam to sleep. That's right. And he from him Not and Steve. created us. Woman. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask all the men to join us as we stand in solidarity and raise our hands and praise God for all our women here today. Because I'm sure the men have known that these women here tonight, everyone, are important people. Amen. 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 So, amen? Amen. amen. Okay. And again, we are here tonight because of, we are here to praise God for his goodness towards us. And no one in Cayman can say we are not blessed. Why? Right? Because I'm sure you know that we are one of the yes. only countries in the world that can congregate like this without wearing a mask. Yes, amen. So, as my pastor would normally say, everybody in Cayman should be praising God. That's right. Amen. amen. Should be serving God. Yes. Should be Christian. Yes. Yes. And tonight, I agree with that. There's no shortage of incredible women in the Bible who have made their mark on the world. Mary of Nazareth, Ruth, Mary Magdalene, Deborah, Queen Esther, and Miriam, just to name a few. Women who have played powerful roles throughout the Bible and are outstanding examples for us women today. Won't you agree, ladies? Amen. 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 Ladies, never forget we are more valuable than some of the most precious items on earth. As Proverbs 3.15 states, she is more precious than rubies, yes. and nothing can desire, can compare with her. That's the Bible. That's, That's right. Amen. Amen. So, woman, we are incomparable. Let us hear the woman say, thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So tonight, ladies, I want you to sit back, relax, and please just enjoy the short program that we have planned for you all. And I hope that you will be blessed. Yes. At this time, we can hear the field of the help of the Lord. And we're going to invite his presence here tonight. So we're going to call my sister, Kathy Mack. To come and open your prayer, and um, I'm going to ask first if we have any spoken requests. Please rem remember Ch um, Teresa Chin and Donald, and the young lady that um, the little five year old I see her mother post that she's doing much better, but she still needs prayer. So please remember her prayer also. <laughs> Please continue to remember my cousin, um, Livia, um, who has a blood clot in her arm. Also, my friend and, um, and Rotan, who's in the hospital. All the requests are in. And Sister again, it says not here tonight. Her dad is not feeling well. So Sister Kathy, you could also request her, please, after that. Can you stand, brother, please? <clears throat> Glory to God. Almighty God, we thank you, Father, for your <coughs> grace and your mercies that have extended unto each and every one of us, dear Lord. Yes. We stand in your presence, dear God, to glorify you and to praise you, dear Father. 
And in the beginning, dear God, you created the heaven and the earth, dear Father. And in the beginning, dear Father, as you look at everything and saw that it was good, dear God, you reached the point, dear Lord, where you said, dear Father, that a woman was needed to be the companion, dear Lord, of a man, dear yes. God. And Father, we glorify you and we thank you, dear God, that we were in your mind, dear Lord. And we thank you, dear God, for the opportunity, dear Father, that we are here, dear Lord, and we serve you, dear God. Your word said, a virtuous woman, dear Lord, that one can find, dear Lord, and her children shall raise up and call her blessed. So, Almighty God, we thank you for being women, dear Lord, for being a part of your glorious kingdom, for being a part of your church, dear God, to be childbearing, dear Father, or even foster children, dear God, and raise them up, dear Lord, to honor you and to praise you, dear God. We realize that we are indeed important, dear Lord, to civilization, dear Father. Oh, Almighty God, we thank you for the opportunity, dear God, that we can come before the throne of grace, dear Lord, and pray to you and call you Abba, Father. Thank you, Almighty God, for this, for this, for this opportunity, dear Lord. Oh, Father, continue to bless each woman, dear Lord. Let them see how important they are, dear God, to their communities, to their workplace, to their families, to their home, Almighty God. May you continue, dear Lord, to open their hearts and their mind, dear Father, to see, dear Lord, what they can do, dear Lord, for each and every one, dear God. Father, we thank you for this service, dear Lord. We thank you for this month. We thank you for the opportunity that we are set aside to be recognized, dear Lord, and no woman, dear Lord, should feel smaller than they are. So, Father, we thank you, dear God. Father, you have heard of the request of the afternoon. Many are sick, many are on their beds of affliction, but we serve a mighty God. Yes. We serve yes. a God who can heal. That's right. We serve That's a God right. who is no failure in him, dear Father. Amen. Almighty God, we are thankful that yes. when we call upon you and we say, whatever we ask, believe in, yes. it shall happen. So dear God, we are seeking the healing, name of dear Jesus. God, upon the bodies of oh. men, dear Father. <laughs> heard all the name, dear Lord. You know them from they were in their mother's womb, dear yes. God, and the very hair on their head is numbered. Yes. Mighty God, may you go forth, dear Lord, and may you touch these bodies and raise them up, dear God, that then people may see your good work and glorify you, which is in heaven. Yes. So, Almighty God, bless each one that is sick, dear Father. Remember my... Brother-in-law James McLaughlin, dear father, Sister Genita's father, dear Lord, may you touch this man, dear God, and may you renew him in his right mind, dear father, visit at home tonight, dear Lord, and may your healing virtue flow, dear God, through that house, dear father, and remember all the many um, church brothers and sisters that are sick, dear God, and are depending, dear father, on a touch of the master's hand. So, Almighty God, we thank you, dear Lord. And as we have heard, dear God, these islands, dear Father, are blessed. Not yes. because of anything that we have done, dear Father, but because we recognize you yes. as God yes. over all, in all, yes. and through yes. us all, dear yes. God. May you continue to give your angel charge over us, dear yes, God, Lord. and keep us, dear Lord, in your love, dear Father. So, dear Father, as a chairperson and her, those that are assisting her, dear God, continue throughout this service. May you bless it, dear Lord. May your Holy Spirit move from the pulpit to the pew. And those that are visiting, dear God, may receive something from this, dear yes. Lord. And even a soul may come to know you, Almighty yes, God, the as their personal Savior. So bless yes. each one, dear Father, and bless this hour, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to import them everyone again and after this time because we'll be sitting for a while after this we're going to be having the opening song take up our mothers and it will be displayed on the screen <coughs>
scripture reading comes to us from page 456, and it's in the hymn number 15, and it will be read by Sister Karen. Good evening, church. Good evening. Our reading is A Worthy Woman. I'm going to ask the ladies on the platform to read the light print and the ladies in the audience to read the gold print. Let us begin. A worthy woman who can find for her price the part of rubies. The heart of her is the her, and she shall have no lack of gain. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She stretches out her hands to the poor. Yea, she stretches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughed at the time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and the law of kindness is on her tongue. She looked well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her, saying, Many daughters have done worthy, but thou excellest them all. Grace is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that fareth to know her, she shall be praised. Amen. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her work her A woman that praised God, they said, a woman that fear God shall be praised. Yes. So tonight, if you're here without knowing the Lord, you're in the right place. That's right. Amen. You can find him right here. Yes. Okay, so um, at this time, we'll be having a poem. This poem is written by our very own <coughs> sister Esther Jackson, and it's written 16 years ago for this very special occasion. And it's going to be read by Sister Linda Rankin Baker. Good evening, church. Good evening. Honoring women. There are many women in the islands today who have bravely fought life battles on their knees. Raising up their children, every day they did pray to provide the home with all the daily needs. Though the nights were long and the day seems also dreary, they would fight and toil on for their family. Washing, cooking, ironing, through their eyes were teared. God was always there to comfort faithfully. Off to church on Sundays, with a grateful heart, they would humbly thank God for his tender love, praying for their loved ones while they were apart, trusting him to always watch them from above. May God always bless you as you go about your daily work each day. Ask him to be with you in whatever you do, caring for your family in your own special way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And we have a solo by Sister Sidney, a woman at the well. Mm -hmm. <coughs> like a woman at the well, I was seeking for
do not know who the Lord is, you are in the right place. Okay, so at this time, we'll be having a poem read by Sister Miriam. She must function in all kinds of situations. She must be able to embrace several kids at the same time. Have a hug that can heal anything from a bruised knee to a broken heart. She must do all this with only two hands. She cures herself when sick and can work 18 hours a day. The angel was impressed. Just two hands? Impossible. And this is a standard model. The angel came closer and touched the woman. But you have made her so soft, Lord. She is soft, said the Lord. But I have made her strong. You can't imagine what she can endure and overcome. Can you think? The angel asked. The Lord answered, not only can she think, she can reason and negotiate. The angel touched her cheeks. Lord, it seems this creation is leaking. You have put too many burdens on her. She's not leaking. It is a tear. The Lord corrected the angel. What is it for? Asked the angel. The Lord said, tears are her way of expressing her grief, her doubts, her love, her loneliness, her suffering, and her pride. Yes. This made a big impression on the angel. Lord, you are a genius. You thought of everything. A woman is indeed marvelous. The Lord said, indeed she is. She has strength that amazes a man. She can handle trouble and carry heavy burdens. She holds happiness, love, and opinions. She smiles when she feels like screaming. She sings when she feels like crying. Cries when happy and laughs, laughs when afraid. She fights for what she believes in. Yes. Her love is unconditional. Her heart is broken when a next of kin or a friend dies. But she finds strength to get on with life. Mm -hmm. The angel asks, so she's a perfect being? The Lord replied, no. She has just one drawback. She often forgets what she's worth. Amen. 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 So true. So true. Thank you, Sister Miriam. If you are listening attentively, you have heard them of the characteristic traits that the woman has. We are very phenomenal. At this time, we are going to have a special prayer for the candidate. We are so blessed to have the candidates who are running in the 2021 election visiting with us today and we are going to be having a special prayer by led by brother Duane. so we're inviting brother ray brother Horace, <coughs> brother roy and brother james Eternal God, 
we honor you tonight, the God of heaven and earth. Amen. You are the creator of all things, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. Yeah. We thank you for this very special occasion for which we have gathered tonight to honor women. Yes. A long time ago, Lord, from the beginning of time, you took a rib from the side of Adam yes. and you made a specialty, a special piece. Yes. And you called her woman. We thank you so much for these very courageous women that stand before us tonight and for the bold step they have taken to serve their country and to make a difference. Lord, we pray thy special blessing upon them, each one, and upon their families. We know, Lord, that it takes much hard work and sacrifice to do what they're attempting to do. And they need courage, they need strength. So we pray there, God, that your hand will be upon them, each one, yes. as they go about canvassing and yes. talking to the people about the issues of the country. You will help them to build meaningful and lasting relationships yes. that will be the bridge to their success for the foreseeable future. Lord, the future is in your hand. Yes. We simply pray that blessing upon them, each one. Give them the strength and the courage they need. We know that there will be difficult times, times, Lord, where perhaps they will be down. But we pray that in those moments you will remind them to call on you. Yes. For you are just a prayer away. Yes. And you, Lord, remind them of the words of, of the wise man Solomon. To trust in the Lord with all their heart. Yes. Lean not unto their own understanding, but in all yes. their ways to acknowledge you. Yes. And that you will direct their path. Yes. Bless them, their God. Watch over them by day and by day. Yes. We pray for their physical and mental well-being. Yes. We ask you, Lord, to be with them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Sister Gina Arise, woman. Good evening, church. Good evening. Good evening. Arise, woman of God. This coin is by Ms. Laudes. Rise up, O woman of God, in what he has given you. The things God has laid on your heart, rise up, go forth and do. Unlock what God has placed within, the potential you have inside. The world is waiting for your release, to expand your wings and fly. Arise in your God-given gifts, for this is your finest hour. Arise in the Lord's holy might, ignited and empowered. For God is calling you to come forth, to impact this world for him. Don't hold back or limit yourself. Let his power arise within you. And take his message to the world, to those that have lost their way, for you can surely make a difference if you hear his voice and obey. You shall be strengthened in the Lord as you begin to arise, conquering those doubts that pull you down and believe who you are in Christ. For you shall surely be transformed. As in you, God increases more and become a woman of true excellence, bringing honor to her Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will be favored with a song by Sister Georgia, one day at a time. <coughs>
us to our trust. We need to live according to what the Lord has laid on us and what the Lord has taught us to do. Live one day at a time. That's right. Walk in the Lord. Show love and do your best. Or even love your own enemies. Yes. Like as a Christian, you have to give and take. That's right. You have to love everyone regardless of the situation. And not just say it by mouth. You have to show, show it. it. That's right. You need to show everybody that we are Christians. Not just going around saying, I am a Christian. Show it to the world. That's right. Go out there and let people pick you up. Oh, she's a Christian. He's a Christian. Yes. Don't just come in here and say, I'm a Christian. Go out and show it to the world. That's right. At this time, we have a final song by the choir, Glorious Calvary. <laughs>
At this time, we're going to have the guest speaker. She's no stranger to our congregation. I ask that you lift her up with your amen, Senior Praise God. She's a very encouraging speaker. She's a woman of God. Sister Latasha Nixon. Amen. amen. amen.
but we seek one to come. Yes. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, in thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for which, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they must give an account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. Amen. If I could select three things from that passage of scripture. It says, let brotherly love continue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Real love for others produces tangible actions. Yes. We must make sure that the love we have for God runs deep enough to affect our hospitality, right. our sympathy, our fidelity, and our contentment. Yes. How can we learn to be contented? How can we have contentment? Strive to live with less rather than desiring more. Mm -hmm. Give out of our abundance rather than accumulate more. Relish what we have rather than resenting or miss what we don't have. See God's love in all that he has provided. That's right. Don't become attached to this world because all we have here <coughs> is temporary, and our relationship and service for God is all that will last. Yes. Obedience and submission. You know, as Christians, women, we owe much to those who have taught us and modeled what we know about the gospel and Christian living. We must continue to follow these good examples that have lived the lives before us whilst keeping our eyes on Christ, yes. who will never change. As the scripture said, he's the same today and forevermore. Yes. And you know, <clears throat> church leaders have a task to help Christians mature in Christ, Christian women. I'm speaking specifically to women, but this is applicable to everyone. Yes. But since it's honoring women, Women, yes, I will be picking on you tonight. So Christian women, helping to be as cooperative as possible eases the burden of the leaders that are trying to get us to maturity. Let us, as women of God, continue to pray and be prayerful for each other. As women, we can sometimes be very competitive. We can bash each other. We can do hurtful things to each other. We must remember that we're all humans. Yes. We're all women. And deep down inside, there's a heart that beats within. So let us continue to pray for each other. Yes. There is the pride if you succeed, and there is depression if you fail. So many emotions all bottled up in a woman, like the poem that Sister Miriam read earlier. God made us special. And there are some women <coughs> that as I read those scriptures tonight, I thought about that had an impact on my life. And it's just a few, it's not a lot, and it's not a lot of commentary that I have. And it's what the Lord laid on my heart. I don't want you to feel as if, oh, my name was not mentioned, so that means I did not have an impact. I love everyone. Yeah. Everyone impacts your life, man, woman, child, That's even right. to the animals, in some way or the other. That's God right. has a way of bringing himself to us and allowing us to see him. Yes. If, but for a moment, we're still and quiet enough, we will hear him, we will see him, we will experience him. That's right. Amen. Amongst the busyness and the noise of life, yeah. sometimes, He's missed. Yes. Remember the story in the Bible with Elijah? Yes. He wasn't in the wind. He wasn't in the thunder. Yes. He wasn't in all the noise. Still still small voice. Voice. He was in that still, small voice. Yes. Does God speak today? 
So has God moved today? Yes. Is yes. God working in the world today? Yes. yes. You might not see it, you might not hear it, doesn't mean he isn't doing it. That's he is right. there, he's yes. ever yes. present, help yes. in trouble. Yes. yes. So, as I speak about these women tonight, I trust that your heart will be blessed and that you will be encouraged, yes. you'll be inspired, you'll be uplifted, and you will continue to want to go on. God is good. All the time. God is faithful. Yes. 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 God always does his part. Even when we're not faithful, he does his part. Yes, that's right. So if I can start with our church mother, Sister Louis Arch, you know, she, the way how Sister Louis entreated you, her hospitality, as a young Christian, I learned so much from going out with her on Saturdays and Saturday mornings to deliver groceries and different items in the neighborhood. Even though I was born and raised in the islands, I was born in Cayman back in the East Pacific. But yes, I raised and raised in Grand Cayman. Uh, she took me to places that I didn't even know existed and the hospitality and the love, the compassion and the thoughtfulness that she displayed among people, since the sincerity, Amen. you know, yeah. it just, it taught me that you could always make a difference in the life of someone, don't yes. care how simple it is, yes. never yes. that it's insignificant. And I think the most profound thing about our church mother, Sister Lois, that I learned from her was, she never let her left hand or her right hand. Yes. And you know, things are different now, with Sister Lois, but I thank God for the impact that she yeah. has had yeah. in my life, yeah. and that she has done, yeah. and the many others yeah. as well, men and women in our congregation and in our community. And Sister Eve Flowers yeah. is no longer with us, she has passed on to eternity, but her simplicity in her appearance, yeah. but she had a remarkable intellect and wisdom with the way she handled matters, and we should got things done. Yeah. It continually reminds me that Sarah Christ is complicated. Sarah God is complicated. We want to complicate it. We right. want to complicate that. That's right. right. Yes. And I can speak from personal experience yes. because I tell my coworkers and people sometimes I suffer from analysis paralysis. I overanalyze and overanalyze and all the things. But that's why it's beautiful to work as part of a team because you have to know to that. But Sarah God isn't complicated. No. You know, we're the ones who complicate it. it yeah. it's, it's simple, it's plain, it's straightforward. Right. That's right. Says that all the time yes. when he speaks, yeah. you know. But I remember Sister Eve Flowers especially for that. And Sister Karistine Reed, you know. I used to frequent Sister Karistine and Brother Ransford House as a young Christian in, in my early days. And um, as a matter of fact, when, if I can put it this way, I felt like the Lord was chasing me. I remember one of my friends drove me to Brother Ransford house during a lunch hour because I couldn't understand what was happening and he sat me down and counseled me and explained to me and spoke with me. And I would always come into their house and go to their house like that we were a child. And um, Sister Karistine gave me a poem about having a hobby. And she was always she would always say to me, because of course I had four little children and all these children, she would say, Hash, you need to have a hobby. You know, the children can grow up, they gonna get old. You need to have something else to do, <laughs> you know? And there were times when I was a bit low and I would go and I would sit and I would talk with her and she would sit and she would listen and she would always end and say to me, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? And she would shake her head her finger and she would look at me straight in the and she said, hey, there's a cross for you. And for me. Yes. So it reminded me that, you know, just as Christ suffered, there will be things that I will have to bear as a Christian. Yes. And I'm thankful for that wise counsel. And our very dear sister Frida Mitchell, yes. I still have the bookmark that she gave me from the very first prayer meeting that I went in that room and they used to have on Tuesday evenings, right, Sister Merlin? On Tuesday evenings before prayer meeting. And Sister Frida was a woman that was firm, mm -hmm. but yet gentle, yeah, yeah. but wise in her counsel. Yeah. She would say to me, 
cash, there is no quick fix to raising children, but prayer changes everything. That's right. And that reminded me as a young mother, as a young Christian, as a young wife, to persevere and never cease praying. And our very own Sister Sylvia Gilbert. As a police officer, I remember Sister Sylvia holding my hands in her office and praying with me. And you know, it reminds me that you're never to be ashamed of doing God's work. That's right. So wherever you are, whoever you are, or whatever you become in life, yeah. never forget That's and right. never be ashamed. That's right. And Sister Verdine, welcome. I can remember Sister Verdine at the cricket field, me and my children there as a new Christian, have been able to change my world over there. And she talked, she came over to me, and she, she's talking to me, and she explained to me, talking to me. I have nobody can hear about modesty and how you must dress modesty. And I was so pleased with love. Thank you. And, and she picks it, and she picks it up my clothes, and you know, she's very nice to talk to me, and you know, just telling me about modesty. And I remember letting me go see the time. And telling her thanks, but yeah, God knows my word, Lord, and he saved me, and he knew all my word, Lord, God is, and when he's ready, he'll, he'll give me enough money to buy my word. And she just continued, you know, fixing <laughs> me up, and then she went about. But you know, I remember that, and I remember the time she came to me, and she told me how something that I did had really hurt her, you know, and I appreciate people like Sister Birdie Robin, you know, because taught me and it continues to teach me that there's a difference with the woman of there's a difference with the woman of the world yes. and the woman of God. That's right. And Amen. You must be able to see that there's a difference, difference. Yes. God's woman yes. and the woman of the world. Yes. And she also taught me that don't care how people may look, how people may behave, there's a heart that beats within. Yes. They're humans and they all have feelings as well. Yes. And <clears throat> Sister Consi, yes. Sister Constance Seymour. Her dedication and willingness to do what she could, yes. it stood out to me. It showed me that little is much when God is in it. Yes. I remember talking to Sister Consi and asking Sister Consi, Sister Consi, I don't know how to get the children to behave in church. How to get up to behave in church? And she looked at me very sternly. She says, you gotta make them behave. <laughs> you gotta teach them, make them behave. Yes. And I looked at her, and she, and, she, and she looked at me as if she knew I didn't understand what I was saying. And she came and said, she says, you have to teach them. She said, teach them how to behave themselves yes. in church. And wise counsel, yes. I remember it, and I tell my children of it right. often, you know? And our very own, again, Sister Darlene, welcome. Yes. <laughs> the courage that she displays in serving God. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember once we were having a rehearsal when Sister Blossom Scott, with Sister Blossom Scott, and I think it was for a Christmas play, and I don't know, everything was going over the place, and I was sitting right there in front, and I was ready to open my mouth to say something. To say something. Sister Darlene was sitting right up there and all that. She, I don't know why the Lord allowed me to look at her, but I thank you. And all she did was this. <laughs> and I looked at her like, and I got to, I looked at her and said, okay, Lord, I hear you, love. And I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. I thank God for people like Sister Darlene, for the courage that she has, not being afraid to do what the Lord tells her to do. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes when you don't understand, mm -hmm. it might, might make any sense to you. It made a lot of sense, and yeah. I needed that at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And also, Sister Rhonda, <coughs> her ability to balance things and, and share her experiences. I know, I remember one night, there was a midweek service and I had to call her. I wanted to come to church, I couldn't get to church because for whatever reason, and I picked up the phone and I was frantic and I called Sister Rhonda. And I said, how do you do it? And she was like, do what? I'm like, how did you bring your children and go to church and serve God and work and do everything? And, <laughs> and she, 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 she shared a joke with me. And she said, um, you know, we had a lot of support. And she, and she explained to me, but she didn't make me feel less of a person. 
she talked to me, she told me about her, her experiences and how she balanced things, and that is what I needed to hear at that time as a, as a young Christian. And you know, it reminds me that God cares yes. about every aspect right. of yes. our life. That's right. And it was something that really stayed with me and meant a lot to me. And even to her sister, Sister Cindy Shaw, mm -hmm. for her strength, her remarkable strength, and what is this? how the saying go? You take a licking, but you keep on kicking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I admire Sister Cindy. I remember sitting in the congregation and Sister Cindy getting up to sing, and she said, she looked down at an individual and she said, I just want you to know that I forgive you for what you did to me. And I sat in the congregation and I thought to myself, I said, God have mercy. I said, Lord, I don't know what it is and I don't know what happened, but if anything, if I ever have anything like that happen to me, give me the courage to get up publicly and apologize and say, I have forgiven you for what you have done to me. That stayed with me and that taught me something. And I thank God for people like, women like Sister Cindy, yes. who's willing and not afraid to have the courage to do things like that. That's right. And Sister Martha, Sister Turnett's grandmother, I can't remember her surname. Yes. yes, Sister Martha Halo. Her commitment in serving God. Yes. The first time I went to Sister Martha's house, we went for a visit, it was a group of us young converts, you know, young and frisky and bright and all bushy tail and we went in <coughs> not prepared at all. She was ill and we went to visit her, you know, to try and encourage her. And so we were there talking, you know, it wasn't prepared or anything and she spoke to us and she encouraged us and she talked to us and then uh, in the middle of the conversation she said, um, so what I have? And we were like, oh, we just came to visit you or whatever, whatever, and she said, well, the next time I'm going to come back, and I need to come back with some songs, and some scriptures, and some encouragement. Don't just come back like that. And I thought to myself, I said, okay, wow. And I just loved that. I loved her honesty, her straightforwardness. And I just loved that. And I go into a Sister Martha's house and visiting her and seeing the contentment with the little material things that she had left an everlasting impression on me that you don't need a whole lot to serve the Lord. That's right. right. That's right. You know? yeah. And our very own Sister Blossom Scott that's no longer here with us. She was as tough as nails. <laughs> <laughs> but she always wanted what was best. Yeah. Not, and a lot of the older women in the church may have had a similar disposition where they were tough. But behind all of that, there was a genuine loving concern, yes. wanting you to do what's best, encouraging you to be the best woman of God for the Lord. Even though sometimes you may not have understood where they were coming from or why they did things the way they did, God would give you wisdom to know how to work with them. You know, I had an experience with Sister Blossom and everyone knows she was my adopted grandmother. And I remember going to her house and um, after the incident, and I said, okay, I need to know if we need to go to the supermarket today, whatever, whatever, whatever. And she just looked. And I said, okay, so I went and I spoke to the helper. I need to know what I need from the grocery store today, whatever, whatever, whatever. And she, and she turned on, she looked at me. I hope you know I was very disappointed with the way you spoke with me last, last night. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and I said, so you need anything from the grocery store because I have to go back to work. And I want you to know that I did not appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and so you have the list ready. I did not expect that from you. I said, yes, ma'am. Did I tell you anything wrong? I said, was I wrong in what I said? I said, but I really have to go back to work, okay? And I want you to know that I went to Brother James about it. Mm -hmm. I said, well, praise the Lord, I never go to him now. Can you please tell me if you need anything from the supermarket? <laughs> and she said, and she looked at me, and she said, Sister Julianne is going to take the helper. I said, okay then, I have to go back to work. You have my number. If you need anything, please call me and let me know so I can know how to organize my day. 
okay, thank you. I said, okay, but I have a good day. And I left. We had an understanding. She knew me. I knew her. But I knew that deep down inside, she wanted what was best for me. I learned that we all need God's gracious love, no matter how educated we are, how talented we are, how much assets or whatever we have, we all need God's love. Yes. And of course, Sister Marciana Tidy, her perseverance and her loyalty, it continually shows me that God is able to keep me. Sister Virginia Borden, her openness, about where Christ brought her from reminds me that we all have a past. Yes. None of us are perfect. That's right. But that Christ's blood cleanses all. Yes. Of us. And you know, there is more that I can continue to speak of. There is a very quiet sister here. I won't call her name. She'll know who she is. I remember her saying to me, You know, sometimes I think Brother Jesus is coming to me, you know. I get up and run because I don't want to do anything. I don't, I, I don't want to do anything. But you know, I'm going to stop it. I can't do that anymore. And I smiled now. I look at her now and I said, Wow. Look at how we avail ourselves to God. What God is able to do with us. And it makes me know, it makes me see that God is able to do anything with anyone as long as we avail ourselves and we allow Him to use us. So, this evening I'm going to close off with a little poem. I tried to get it printed, but I didn't, but not really a poem. Listen to the words of this. When the British Broadcasting Corporation asks for examples of important sounding, obscure, and even bizarre job titles, one writer offered hers. Underwater ceramic technician. She was a dishwasher at a restaurant. <laughs> Sometimes titles are used to make a job sound more important. Yes. When the Apostle Paul listed some of God's gifts to the church in Ephesians 4.11, he did not intend for those to be understood as high-sounding job titles. All the parts of the body are necessary for the body to function properly. No one part is better than another. What was of primary importance was the purpose of these gifts. They are all for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the stature of the fullness of Christ. It matters little what title we hold. What is important is that we strengthen the faith of God's people. Amen. When we gauge our effectiveness by the standard that the Bible gives us, it will not matter when we are moved to another role or no longer hold a specific title. Out of love for God, we serve to build up fellow believers and we let God give his commendation in heaven as he sees fit job titles. And it says, Lord, please use me as your instrument to touch others' lives. Help me not be concerned about what title I hold, but instead that my life might show others your grace. God's gifts to us are not, are not for us, but for others. So today's Palm Sunday, Pilate asked them all a question in the Bible. Then they said, crucify him, crucify him. He said, why? What evil has he done? So this evening, we're all asking all the women, in a few days, March will be over. It will end. And I ask you, what will you do? How will you continue to honor those who have had an impact on your life now and always? How will you live your life yes. to change and to impact someone else's life? Someone said, each one, teach one. Yes. Yes. So God work involves many different individuals yes. with a variety of gifts and talents. Yes. 
they're no superstars in this task. Yeah. Only team members performing their own special roles. We become useful members of our team by setting aside our own desires for the glory of what we do. Don't seek praise that come from people. Instead, seek approval yes. that comes from God. Amen. Amen. We are blessed and keep each and every one. That's right. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Latasha, for your encouraging words and that short exhortation. Tonight we're honoring women. It will be remiss of me if we do not honor the women here in our church. Firstly, our church mother, Sister Lois Arch. She is the monarch of our church, and we do honor her highly this evening. Right. Our pianist and our organist, Sister Ruth Rankin and Sister Esther Jackson, yes. who works tirelessly at all times and are Amen. always available yes. upon call. Yes. Sister Esther and Sister Ruth, we honor you this yes. evening. Yes. Yes. Sister Anita, who assists Sister Ruth in the choir, we also honor you. Thank you. It would also be remiss of me if we did not acknowledge our very own Sister Fifi. Yes. Sister Fifi sits quietly behind the scene, yes. but her work impacts us all. Yes. Especially for those who have eye problems. Yes. I can yes. to that. <laughs> Sister Fifi, we honor you this evening. Yes. For the women of the choir, Sister Marvia and myself, we take this opportunity to say we appreciate each one of you and we honor you this evening. To Sister Sydney, who always makes herself available. Yeah. Even if it's the last minute, she never tells us no. Right. She always say yeah. Yes, Sister Sydney, we appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. And to you, the audience, the women in the audience, the women of God, those who were invited, we honor all of you this evening. You're all here because of a purpose. Trust God and he will direct your path. We also want to extend thank you to Brother Roy, Brother Horace, Brother Ray, and Brother Dwayne, and our very own Brother James R. who allow us to have the service this evening. Along with our very own Sister Benita Myers, who was unable to be here with us this evening. In closing, I thought it was fitting this morning when I was reading my daily bread, and I called Sister Marvin and said, you know what, I'm not going to write a closing remark. My devotions already told me exactly what I need to read. Surrounded by God. That's what we have to live by. Sister George and sing it one day at a time. Yeah. We cannot do nothing, nothing without the help of yes. the Lord. Start your morning with God and end your day with God. That's right. And it reads, in a busy airport, a young mother struggled alone. Her toddler was in full tantrum mode, screaming, kicking, and refusing to board their plane. Overwhelmed and heavily, heavily pregnant, the burdened young mother finally gave up, sinking to the floor in frustration, covering her face and starting to sob. Suddenly, six or seven women, travelers, all strangers, formed this circle around the young mother yes. and her child, sharing snacks, water, gentle hugs, and even a nursery song. Their loving circle calmed the mother and child, who then boarded their plane. The other women returned to their seats, not needing to discuss what, the, what they had done, but knowing their support had strengthened a young mother exactly when she needed it. Yes. This illustrates a beautiful truth from Psalms 125. As the mountains surrounded Jerusalem, says verse two, so the Lord surrounded his people. The images remind us how the bustling city of Jerusalem is indeed flanked by surrounding hills, among them the Mount, the Mount of Olives, Mount Zion, and Mount Mora. In this same way, God surrounded his people supporting and standing guard over our souls, both now and forevermore. Thus, on tough days, look up unto the hills, as the psalmist put it, 
God awaits with strong help, steady hope, and everlasting love. Mm -hmm. And the, in closing this evening, I would like to say to our candidates for the 2021 running for election, start with the off the start, but also include love. L-O-V-E, love. Yes. Everyone you come in contact with is important. Just yes. love them. That's Regardless right. of what, just love. That's we'll right. not, oh, I forgot our offering. We'll not be collecting offering, but we have an offering box on this side of our exit door and as well as the entrance. So when you're, you're leaving, if you want, the offering boxes are there. We'll now be having our closing song, Mother, Mothers of the Bible. So Sister Sydney will come and lead, and we'll have a closing prayer done by Sister Vita.